right, good morning, good afternoon and good evening from wherever you're watching in the world. Right, I first like to apologize for the long delay of the videos. Just got back into the UK, settling down, and now we're back into the cold. Turtlenecks on, the scarves are on, but here we go. All right, so today we're gonna to show you something a bit different. Um, we're heading off to the headquarters of somewhere a little bit special. You'll probably be able to tell by the uh, title of this video. Um, but we hope you're gonna enjoy this little vlog that we have today. A bit more behind the scenes and a bit more content for you guys to see of the things that really don't happen and like the things that you don't really see and that happen on TV. So hope to see you guys soon. Stay tuned, we'll catch you on the other side. Right guys, so we have arrived um, at a very special destination that we are at today. Voila! And this is it. This is Sky guys, this is the headquarters. Um, we are going to be very fortunate to get some behind the scenes footage of what really happens inside. Um, so stay tuned and I hope you get to enjoy this little vlog today. Right guys, so we have just gone through security, we've entered the vicinity which as you can see we are in the hub of Sky which is an amazing thing, you know, being a child growing up watching Sky TV, having Sky Wi-Fi and all of these things, so it's nice to be here at the hub, so yeah, have a look. Alright, see you guys soon. So we have just finished up the interview at Sky Headquarters, um, pretty amazing experience, um, didn't get to film a bit of the behind the scenes but I'm sure I'll be able to fit something in but um, we're here, um, what an experience it's been here to, to be here today at Sky amongst these amazing people and what an experience it's been today. So I'll definitely share some of the interview clips up with when and how I can and um, definitely see you on the other side. That you've done away from you like that didn't just hurt me but it hurt my family it hurt not just me but it hurt the children who followed me who aspire to be like myself so it's a domino effect and that's what people need to understand and see that this is actually a really big problem because it's not just having the effect on the individual it's having a domino effect so and that's the that's, that's the reason Right guys, so I'm here with one of our main gentlemen at Sky, James. James, please introduce yourself. I'm James Cole, I'm a reporter with Sky Sports News. Fantastic. And James, I've actually been watching for many, many years on my TV screen, reporting cricket. And how many years have you been doing this for now, James? 15 years here at Sky Sports News. Okay, fantastic. And how do you find it? Well, amazing. I was very lucky, especially in the early days where we used to tour with the England teams. Um, the privilege to go around the world with them. Uh, less so now, uh, particularly in COVID time. Yeah, but it's, time. it's no, it's, it's it's a great job. We're very lucky, we're very privileged to be able to talk about something we love. Amazing, yeah. So look at that. You know, being able to travel the world as a presenter, meet you know my idols and speak to them at first time and ask them questions. I would love to ask them. That's an amazing thing. And so, tell me, what's the what's next for Sky? And what's what, what's your predictions on the on the World Cup? The World Cup. Oh, uh, England got some injury problems, haven't they? It's yeah. going to be tough. I go England, Pakistan final. I'm not going to give you the winner, but I'm going to go for an England, Pakistan final. That could be very, very spicy. Fantastic. And we can catch this all on Sky, right? Yep, Sky Sports to show him the, uh, the T20 World Cup. There we go. James Cole at first hand here. What an amazing guy. What an amazing interview we've had here today, guys. We'll definitely share it up. Stay tuned and make sure you, you, got, you got any social media? Yes. 
What is it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you got LinkedIn. We'll put it in the lip. We'll put it. Yeah. There we go. I'm on LinkedIn too. <laughs> apparently. No. Talk to my agent. There we go. We we got his agent over here. So we put all the links to his social media in the de uh, description below. Follow him, guys. Stay tuned, and we'll see you on the other side. Thank you. Right, guys. So as you know, we're here at Sky headquarters um, discussing the issue that we have at hand here, which is obviously racism in cricket. I wanted to get your you know, understanding and your views on what, what, what you make of this whole situation. First of all, credit to yourself for coming here and talking to us because I think that's key. I think speaking out, as you said to us today, is absolutely crucial to changing cultures, changing mindsets, changing society. Uh, the Yorkshire scandal was one of the biggest stories to hit cricket in my 15 years here at Sky. And I think we're just touching the surface. I think this is going to go on and on. I think Yorkshire is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, and the DCMS Select Committee hearing next week, I think is going to be hugely important. Um, yeah, where we go from here, I think it's going to take more people like yourself, current players, former players to speak out. And I think that can only be a positive thing. And what Azim Rafiq has done is incredibly great. So exactly that, you know, Azim's given us a platform to voice these concerns and hopefully collectively together guys, you know, we want to get behind this and support cricket, the ethnic minorities and to really see this flourish. Stay tuned for the interview, it will be up on Sky very soon guys and we'll go into it in a bit more detail, me and James here, where you can find out a bit more about it. Thank you very much. racism from a very young age um, and it's been a very tough thing to deal with if I'm honest with you but being a representative for the British Muslim community I've had to almost suck it up a bit and just take the hit sometimes even though I've never really wanted to having this from on off the pitch from on the pitch at professional level even at county level yes but it's one of those things that comes down to like a form of sledging is that a form of sledging? I, t I disagree. I was always very fearful that it will get brushed under the carpet, nothing will amount to anything, and you will just be called ex- Do the issues exposed by Rafiq go in the sport of cricket? Former Kent and Essex cricketer Junaid Nadir has told us he was racially abused at all levels of his career, including at the county level, and Nadir never reported the abuse through fear that nothing would be done, but he has praised Rafiq for giving him the confidence to finally speak out. I was only 17, 18 years old. I was announced Kent's Young Player of the Year in the, in the club side after being released from the Kent Academy. Um, being told that I wasn't even good enough to play club cricket, it really affected a young child at that time. My stats at the time were impeccable. I was representing England age groups at the time, so there was no reason, apparent reason to drop me. I should have been signed at the time. Further more so, I went away, I, I played very well. I succeeded in my club season, which they said I could never do. I won the Kent Young Player of the Year. And in doing so, I broke the Kent League record since 1860. It's the Kent best bowling performance in history. It's 8 for 16. 
It's never been done before and to this day it's never been broken. On the back of that basis, the Ken County should have had a re-looking at the individual and said maybe we should potentially sign them again. It was not that. You released from Kent Academy. Do you think that was because of your South Asian heritage? Potentially. It could be mainly one of the reasons. 